It's kind of cool the way that red sits on the cup like that. That actually would be a cool design. Where you can see through it? You see that, that is kind of cool, yeah. It's just confetti. Isn't that cool? We'll be right back. Well, it's not cool enough for an open. I think it's cool enough for an open. No, it wasn't. Well, the, cool, not for the radio. Your cool meter is off. I, I give you five out of ten stars on that. I think it's a six. No, it's, we'll be right back. No. I created a pseudo name and I do the thumbs down. It's me. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. What do we wake up? I'm Pastor Jason. I'm Pastor Scott. And uh, we found the thumbs down. It's you. It is. It's me. I just, I'm not sure I'm into all this greasy grace. Just letting people <laughs> you sin. You greasy grace? Just letting people sin. <laughs> you know, I, Does because, somebody actually use the word greasy grace? I'm just gonna, I've never heard that before. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say it. You know, I was against the message of grace for the better part of my life from, from the age of, of the... The age of me starting we to read were, the Bible till I was 34. Because we were so indoctrinated Maybe with 30, the law. 31. And I was also very good at, I could quote all the scriptures about uh, right. the things that kind of pushed back on the message of grace. And, right. But as I studied and studied the word more and more, I realized, oh, I was wrong. And, the, and the, the God took me to a chapter in Isaiah 54 and he he showed me, he's like, you're wrong about this. Really? Yeah. And he sh- and so what now, is it? We want to know. Now we want to know. <clears throat> Isaiah 54? Well, it says, uh, it, the passage that really hit me there. so hard was, is, so now I have sworn that I will never be angry with you again. And I thought, but he has to be angry when we make mistakes. How can he, how can he swear never to be angry with us again? Right. Like, how can he do that? Like, that means that, what? He took the power away from me to make him angry. Right. He doesn't see. He sees you finished. So, so I was there for two months, and then I, I, I got it. I went, okay. And then all the scriptures that... See, Saul used the scripture to prove mm-hmm. that, that, that Jesus wasn't the Messiah. Right. But then when he met the Messiah and got a revelation of the Messiah, then suddenly all those scriptures switched, right. turned on like a light, and suddenly the ignorance became revelation. The Pharisees knew the Bible but didn't recognize the Messiah. They didn't have understanding. They didn't have understanding. So it was in my study and my seeking that suddenly God turned it on like a light. And you went, oh my gosh, wait a second, I'm not a horrible person. <laughs> I'm not the worst person on the earth. Because that's what the law does. You wake up every morning well, and you went through everything that you did wrong yesterday. Because I was the guy that like, okay, tell me the rule and I'll do it. Like, yeah, he was. My self-control was nine out of ten stars. right? And I was one. But what it did is it made me arrogant. It made me right. judgmental. It made me unforgiving. I could solve everybody's problem on a dime. Like, I know what your problem is. I know what your problem Well, you know what your problem is. And, right. and so it actually made me... An, a, a, a battlement or a pushback. I was close. Jesus said this. He said, "You keep closing the door of salvation in the face of the people." Oh wow! I was that guy. He closed it, and I didn't mean to be. But praise God that He set me free. And, and so, the grace got in so, you. So when I when I hear when I see the scriptures of people arguing against grace, I'm like, oh yeah, I used to do that. <laughs> I was my head that one. I remember that. <laughs> but then you can't argue with the fact that the Bible says that God keeps no record of wrong. He Heaven said, has has no record. God is no longer counting a man's sin against him. That's a troubling thought. Right. Because he needs to count. Like, I'll count for him if he's not... Ke- Isn't that what we do? Listen, Scott. Isn't that what we do? i got to count. I don't know if you noticed this, God, but Scott made some mistakes. <laughs> I've got to count. Jason's got all the numbers. We're going to get to heaven, and God's like, oh, yeah, Scott, you're in. Jason's like, no, 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 hold on. He Turn said, to page 382. I, he's like, I keep no record of wrong. Well, you should. You should. You should. <laughs> You should keep, that's you should the accountant get, in you. You should get an accountant and keep some records because, man, some people have been failing. Gabriel, get a, get a notepad. You're going to write some of these things down. <laughs> that guy's holy. Are he, you kidding? Listen, I've got stuff he, on him. He pushed me down the stairs. He pushed me down the stairs. <laughs> he blew old. pepper in my face. We're that's not, a wrong. We're not even in our scripture. Do we want to just do Isaiah 54? I do. I want to okay, do Isaiah 54. Uh, what's, what uh, verse was it in? Uh, that's a great question. I've never been the guy like mom that can like they rattle go, off the verse. I mean, part. we go a long way. Happen. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Of course, we know that every tongue which rises against you in judgment shall condemn. He says this in verse nine. Today, this will be like the na- days of Noah. And we have to remember that today is that day. Right. This is the day. He said, "When I swore that the waters of Noah would never again cover the earth, so now I have sworn. Now, so if wow. God swears, it's done. Okay, right. Right." He says, I swear, I'm sw- I've sw- I have sworn not to be angry with you, never to rebuke you again. Wow. That hit me so hard. Well, he needs to be rebuking people, man. And, uh, and, and then I'm called to be an imitator of God. So where does that land me? In, in a position to stop rebuking people? 
And you said something, and I wanted to touch on this a little bit. You know, people say, well, then, you know, you're just, you, you're just getting up and, and you're tickling. They use the tickle in people's ears uh, yeah. thing. You know, you're just encouraging people. You're just tickling your ears. People, you're tickling. People need to know what they're doing wrong. And you brought up to me the other day that that, that scripture actually was talking, because you have to remember when it was written, it was talking to the people who tickling the ear was the judgment teaching. Yeah, if you go and read the whole chapter and, and, and recognize the Hebrew religion, the Hebrew people were rejecting and persecuting anyone who called Jesus the Messiah. Right. They believed that was a massive cult, and they were they were squashing it, man. They were stoning them to death. Yeah. The, he, the, the church that Peter, James, and John had established at one time was 20,000 people in it. When they stoned Stephen, you go back and read it, it's, the Bible says everyone left that church except for the disciples. They went from 20,000 people to 12 people in one day. Wow. The persecution was so great on the Hebrew people that people were disowning members of their family members if they decided they believed in Messiah. Right. And so he, he was saying the ear tickling message is when you go to people and say, this was the ear tickling message. This was the thing they were battling. Is you go to people and say, okay, Jesus was a great prophet, but he wasn't really a Messiah. He didn't really raise from the dead. And the law still matters. We still have to be circumcised. We still have to do the Mosaic law. This settled people down. They went, oh. It tickled their ears. That's went, what oh, I did okay, good. Today, it translates different too. Because when, I, it, when you teach a message that says, you bunch of sinners need to quit sinning, that's the message that people long to oh, hear. Oh, there you go. Oh, I needed that. That's the message that tickles their ears. The one that gets people persecuting the speaker. Is the Joel thing. Is the one you that says... Win. Grace. God's forgiven you. He's he redeemed loves you. you. He accepts you. He loves oh. you. The Bible says that the, ch the child of the slave will always persecute the child of the promise, not vice versa. Right. So when you become, when you start to step into God's promises and see God the way so he good, sees Jason. you, the people who are, are in agreement, they'll attack you. Right. But when you're in the promise, you don't attack the others. No, of course not. We, we want, the, we're like, hey, you should come to the promised land with <laughs> this us. This is pretty good. I know the giants seem but big, it, but I promise you, God's given this to you. Here's the thing, though. You just gave people a license to sin. But <clears> the <throat> funny thing about that is, is the rules never stopped anyone from sinning. <laughs> it, <laughs> right, ever. No. The, the garden strategy. even had one rule, and they couldn't stop that one. God's, they came down with ten rules, and it still didn't stop anyone from sinning. We have to remember this. Satan's strategy is to give you the right and wrong. Right. It's, right? What was Satan trying to give Eve? The knowledge of, of good, good and, and evil, evil. Which is what she wanted. We want to know what's right and wrong so that we can live right or wrong. But God says, no, no, I'm not trying to give you the right and wrong. That'll come automatically. Right. I'm circumcising your heart. I'm developing in you new desires. I want to get my promises to you because when your my promises are in your life, you'll have no need. And when you have no need, you won't take the apple. So it's his grace and his promises that lead, his goodness leads me unto repentance, or his grace and his promises lead me without lack so Satan can't play with my temptation. It's the knowledge. See, he, did, he, did, he didn't get her. The sin was, is the knowledge of good and evil. He's still yes. using the same thing today. Yeah. He's trying to get Christians all worried about the knowledge of, well, this is wrong and this is right. This is wrong. And so I want to know what's wrong and what's right. Instead of just going to the Word of God and just trying to be, because Jesus says, you want to know what's right to do? Love people. Love God. <laughs> There you go. You want the knowledge of right judging or judging them is not loving them. The Bible says this, that the man with the spirit judges all things, but is rightly judged by no man or no one. So I judge rightly things, but I don't judge people. Oh, See, so the good. ultimate judge of people is only Christ. But Christ said, I didn't come to judge, but to save. So now what are you going to do? <laughs> right? Jesus said this. He said, anyone who believes in me will never be judged. Now what are you going to do? And then you look at the fact that did Jesus reject sinners? No. <laughs> he ran towards them. The only he ones, fixed them. The only one he rejected were the ones that were judging the sinners. The only ones he rejected were the ones that were pushing and closing the door of salvation, that were pushing right. people away from but Christ, he said, trying to kill Christ. He wanted them sinners. I'm going to go to Zacchaeus' house. I'm going to hang out. Everywhere mm -hmm. you look, you see him hanging out and embracing the sinners. Yeah. The, the, the prostitute. The, whatever I didn't you, come for the, the righteous. I came for the sick. Right? And he's like, where's your accusers? I don't accuse you either. I'm the sick. <laughs> If this Jesus came for the sick, then I'm in. Praise we, God, he's, he's, I was sick and he healed me. We need to pray over your day. Dear Father, Lord, we thank you and praise you for everyone watching. You help us all to step into that message of grace, Lord. That message that doesn't judge, doesn't shut the door on people, doesn't shut the door on salvation. But instead, we have grace on our lips. We love and accept people. And we know that we're not the builders of people's lives, that it's you. 
that's going to build their lives. You're going to tell them what's wrong. And when you tell them and get in there, you allow them to fix things in the right order, in the right process, in the right steps. And so we thank you and praise you, Lord, that I can go through my day knowing that in Christ Jesus, all my sins have been washed away and heaven has no record of the things that I have done wrong. So why am I keeping a record in Jesus' name? Amen. Amen. I heard a, I want to, I heard a pastor say this once. He said, if somebody's not saying about your message, oh, you're giving people a free pass to sin, he said, then you're not preaching the gospel Paul preached. That's so <laughs> I'm going to clap, and then we're going to go to this so clip. So somebody types in the comment, man, you're just giving people a free pass to sin. You go, yeah, that's what they said about Paul. Of yeah. course we're not. What then? Should we keep on sinning? Of course not. Let's, uh, let's watch this clip. See, faith is about realizing Jesus in you right in the midst of contradiction. Listen, contradiction is part of why God put Jesus inside of you so that the power of God would be unto him and not unto you. So when somebody looks at you, they know it's you and they see what God has done in you and they give God credit because they know you couldn't do it. The contradiction is not the focus. What's in you, the treasure. God put this treasure in earthen vessels. The treasure is in a skin suit that's full of contradictions. And so what do we do? We focus on the contradictions. God focuses on the treasure. Stop looking at your mistakes and start looking at Jesus' obedience. Stop looking at your limitations and start looking at his unlimited power that's in you. The treasure is in you. I'm sorry there's contradictions. God made it that way because it makes sense to him so that there's no way we can take the credit and get the glory. Okay, let me, let me get to this. Everybody say contradiction. See, what happens, man, is we allow the contradictions that exist in people's performances to hurt us. That's why we get hurt, dog. Because you focused on what they didn't do. And you trusted them. And then how many of you know that you can't trust people? No, you can't trust nobody. My Bible said, thank you. I usually work alone, but I'll take that. <laughs> now watch this. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Yeah. So what we're supposed to do is trust the Lord and love people. What we do is we trust people and love the Lord. Yeah. So we treat God like people and we treat people like God. And then when we get into a relationship with people and we give them the place that should be occupied by Jesus, when they contradict themselves, it destroys us. Oh, listen to me. This is, this is why people walk around hurt for 10 years. Oh, he hurt me. They broke me down. I'm not minimizing your pain. I'm just saying, what did you expect was going to happen when you put your trust in people and just loved God instead of trusted God and loved people? See, the Bible says be fervent in your love for one another because your love for one another is what covers a multitude of sin. Our love has to cover the contradictions. You can't cover the contradictions with trust so we get into marriages and marriage is built on trust no it isn't if marriage was built on trust nobody would be married because everybody is frail frag fragmented flawed marriage is built on love because love covers the contradictions that exist listen <coughs> The closer I get to you, the more you provide me to overlook. People always say about Steve Hage, the more you get to know him, the more it ruins everything. <laughs> Brother looks good from the curb. You get up on him, you're like, oh, Lord, is there anything? How could the Lord use that guy? So. What happens, man, is 
we don't understand that God never intended for us to trust people. God intended for us to love people and trust Him. Give us thumbs up. Make sure you like it. Share it. Go to wakeuptv.tv. And uh, don't forget about our finance conference, November 1st and 2nd. Gary Kesey's oh, going to be, be here. So LivingWordEvents.com. How much? It's like $1,000. It's free. But it's the information is free. $500. Yeah. You know, you have to invest your time, and time is valuable. Around You're right. Arizona people are busy. We're busy. Take the time to invest in your kingdom financial future. And don't forget to be in church this weekend.